Right, um, I think I'd like to welcome back to the stage our energizer, Natalie Cook, to provide our closing address around opportunities for the next gen, motivating change over 10 years. Yes, Loretta, we're motivating all that change. Well, that was exciting, wasn't it? I'm out the back going, this is going to be great. I'm thinking I'm going to have a nice close. I'm going to get in here and be energetic. And now I don't know what to say. Because <laughs> in case I say it wrong. Because ultimately, that's what it's about, right? We are trying to find an equity framework for all. Have you found a framework ever in the world that suits everyone? It's a good utopic motivation for change. But I haven't in the professional athlete world. Oh, it doesn't matter who you are. And I've come across people that I thought had the perfect body and they feel like they're overweight or too short or not happy in their body or not well or don't have well-being. As a professional athlete for 20 years, I was called fat. I wore a bikini. You cannot hide anything. Not only was I called fat, the scales weren't enough, I would have the scientists come over with the clippers and go like that and then count it and grade it against the others in the stable and go, actually, I don't understand why you're so good because you're fat. Right? This happened many years. 1996, won a bronze medal, 10 kilos overweight. 2000, tried to lose the weight because people said that's what I should do to play better. Lost probably five, won a gold medal. Most people then go, that's because you lost your weight. I said, no, I still carried five. The person next to me that came second had the best volleyball body in the world. So I'm sort of, I've been here all day. I've been taking notes. I've been sitting at the front. I've absorbed everything. And for me, this is about in between here. Because I just heard in a larger body, a fatter body, an obese body, it's going to affect someone, whatever word we say. That even if you, Dom, for your honesty, feel health and wellness and have a great blood pressure, then that's good. You can manage or not. Maybe you're not managing weight. Maybe you accept it. Maybe you don't. But then I heard Robin... Talk about our next generation and the babies born today. How many born today? Hundreds. And what that's going to look like for them, not in 10 years. We heard about generation. We're talking 50 years about what that's going to do. Right? Now, that's why I put my stuff at the front so I can get it when I forget it. Just talk amongst yourselves. Actually, turn... Oh, thank you for the music. Very good. Turn to the person next to you and tell them your word in your well-being exercise. I want you to talk about what your word was. Okay, and then talk about who you projected it to. So was it a family member? Was it your partner? Was it a business partner? Who did you project your word to? So talk about that. Okay. Does anyone want to share their word? Anyone want to share the word they had? Can you just, yep, Ollie? Learning. Learning, great. Perseverance. Empower. Empower. Chill. Chill. Connect. Connect. Education. Education. Push. Push. I like it. Push <laughs> everything uphill, straight to William Street <laughs> and Canberra. Push, right? I've heard it's a political responsibility. I've heard it's an environmental responsibility. I've heard it's a social responsibility. I've heard it's community. I've heard it's personal. I've heard it's not personal. Ah, oh, confused. <laughs> Anyone else confused? Right? What can we do? 
what can you do? What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? What can you do? What can you do, Peter, more than your amazing already going to the gym and my health for life? Right? What can we do? Now, I went for a walk at lunchtime. I walked past um, a little cafe. Do anyone know the one near the ABC there? What's it called? No dough. What's in there? Donuts. I even, I did the ABC radio this morning and I even said to health and wellbeing, I said, I'll do it at 7.30 this morning if I get a coffee and a donut. And then I realised I just said that to health and wellbeing Queensland. <laughs> I have been thinking about a donut since last night. I haven't had a donut. I've wanted a donut. Right? I've seriously, I am a... I have been a high-performance athlete. I've been to five Olympic Games. I have one vision in my life, and that's this. <laughs> I have one focus. This is all I think about. And I guarantee there are people in this room that this is all you think about, what we've talked about today. Who, is those, who are those people? We just think about the health and well-being and, and obesity and um, bigger bodies, larger bodies, fat bodies, Right? This is your life. Gosh, sorry, microphone issues. Jeez, I can't get my jacket behind there. Can you give me a massage? What have I got there? Oh, that's it. Awesome. I got no idea. Right? This is all I see since I was eight years old. I also hear that professional athletes maybe don't inspire the general population because there's too big a gap. And we need proximal role models. I'll tell you that in 1982, Lisa Curry won the 100 metre freestyle in the Commonwealth Games. I was eight in Townsville. I sat in front of the TV, I said, I want to be like her. Ended up a beach volleyballer, that's a different story, we don't have enough time. <laughs> Partly because I wasn't good at swimming. Good enough to do what I wanted to do, which was the dream to win an Olympic gold medal. My first coach was Laurie Lawrence. We all know what he does. He wouldn't be allowed to coach today. The world has changed. Society is expecting different things, demanding different things. People are demanding different things. Consumer, people-centred, people-led, athlete-led. In my day as an athlete, I was told, I said, oh, too tired, I need a day off. Coach would say, bad luck, get out there. Now they've got a whoop, a Fitbit, a Garmin that says, coach, heart rate's too high, I need a rest. <laughs> Mental health day. Coach says, oh, okay. What if that happens, Olympic gold medal day? Hold on, just stop the serve a minute. I just gotta have a rest. <laughs> now I'm being over dramatic, but this is how, this is the highest level of performance of the human body. Body, mind, spirit, emotion. I get to choose. I got, I walked past a donut shop. I said, I want one today. Probably not in this environment, shouldn't. I still want one. Anyone else have a desire? I would like a donut right now. Right? We're taught at school through Cookie Monster and Sesame Street, sometimes food. We're taught about our food. We still have personal responsibility and choices. My daughter is seven. She loves M&Ms. She would eat a whole packet if I let her. And if I'm not there paying attention, she would. So my strategy, rightly or wrongly, is I give her five. Actually, I give her seven because she's seven in the bottom of a bowl and put popcorn on it. She's got to get to them. <laughs> right? Then I found out she's got an intolerance to corn. <laughs> Here I was thinking it was the milk and then, so now, you know, the moral of the story is there is always something. The person we spend the most time with is ourselves. We have to be comfortable in our own body. If we're not, that prompts us to go and see someone. Whether that's a GP, whether that's a dietitian, whether that's a psychologist, whether that's a, a sport, if we're lonely and we want to play sport or we want outdoor recreation sport and we go and want to paddle a kayak at River Life. I know personally, after retiring from 20 years of obsessive compulsive exercise, to be an Olympic gold medalist, that for me it's walking, it's yoga, it's golf. 
I've lost my competitive drive. I can let my seven-year-old win. (laughs) Ten years ago, maybe not. It's actually all, in my humble opinion, personal responsibility because it's our choice to go to the MP. If people aren't going to the MP to complain, to get political, societal, systemic change, then it's still our choice. I believe it's all about how we think, thinking about what we eat, thinking about how we move, thinking about how we interact, thinking about how we engage family, community, and thinking about how we engage health and wellbeing to make a difference for every single person, wherever they are in their life, to support them so that they have a better life. That will be different for everybody. There is no one model for everyone. Sometimes we try. We try and like, oh, I'll just talk to all these people because I can give them the same answer. No, we're all different. I was fortunate I played a sport that didn't require speed off the block. First one to the wall wins. I could play emotionally, I could play tactically, I could play strategically. I could play 10 kilos overweight when my, the person across the net looked like she should win. And that's the same in what we do in life. So I could have a view that I go, you know what, that person's overweight, obese, fat, tall, short, my personal opinion, whatever it is, I'm just pointing to a chair, by the way, just (laughs) a chair. But someone else's opinion would be different. You could look at me and go, well, she looks fit. She looks like she's still doing exercise. I didn't do any for three years because I was exhausted. After 20, and I thought, great, I've done 20 years of extra exercise. I don't have to do any for the rest of my life. (laughs) Just a formula. Didn't quite work. (laughs) I said to myself, self, when you retire, you've got one year or 10 kilos, whatever comes first. This was my self assessment. Do you know what came first? 10 kilos, six months. It took a lot. It does take it. It's a choice every day. And I get that there are other, all these other factors. And I get that there's the indigenous landscape and the, rem- the remote and rural and the s- supply chains. And I get all that. Our job is to connect here with health and well-being at a whole new level to connect with other partners, to find ways to help every single Queenslander have a better life, whatever that looks like for them. And they get to be the driver of that car. They get to choose what that looks like. But if there's someone that wants to lose 16 kilos and run in a triathlon and wants to do all that, then Health and Wellbeing Queensland has to find a way to support that. If we have someone that wants to get off the couch who feels... Um, morbidly obese and actually wants to interact with community, then we have to support that. The Activate program here will support more active, more Queenslanders being more active more often. I still think about the donut. I'm still doing it now. (laughs) Right? I would absolutely be lying to you if I didn't. And I go, I shouldn't have that today. And we have one. I have a muffin, raspberry, white chocolate, and then I'll say I have one this week, and then tomorrow I get an opportunity to have another one. I get a choice. And so it's up to us to decide what our Olympic gold medal moment's going to be in 10 years for this sector. I've written on my ball, Robin. Could you come up, please, before I... I've written on the ball I'm going to give to you. It's got Gen Q, go for gold. It's got today's date. And so in 10 years' time, when 2032 comes, which is really an opportunity for a catalyst of change, politicians are listening. I can tell you... Who's listening? In here, are there politicians? Um, On the legacy framework, the minister, Hinchliffe, for the legacy of 2032, has a column about this, everything we've been talking about today. It is important. It is on the map. And we have the best organisations in Queensland here today to work with Health and Wellbeing Queensland to get Queensland's best outcome for all Queenslanders. 
for Olympic gold medalists like me, all the way to remote indigenous communities who just want to be able to have better food security and food choices. And that's what it's about. The programs are sensational. I love what these guys do. Please make sure that you connect at a whole new level and make sure your partnerships are as impactful as they can. So together, the Olympic motto is stronger, higher, faster, together. Together we can make a difference. Robbie, that is for 10 years and it matches your dress. Totally. And um, who's taking pictures? Robbie and I have done this before. Oh. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so we, congratulations, well done on your inaugural symposia. Uh, the work, your passion, your commitment, your team's passion, the work that's gone into this today, and everyone that sat through the whole day. Congratulations, hand up, self high five, and I'm going to hand back to Loretta to close up. Thanks, Robbie.